Hello and welcome to Security Management 201. I'm Professor Wool and today we're going to be talking about NAT considerations when managing your security policy. So let's look at a, a typical simple example. Suppose you have in your organization you have three firewalls, firewall 1, firewall 2, firewall 3, and um, a particular business owner uh, made a change request because they're powering up a new application and they need to allow traffic from 10.1.1.1 to 3.3.3.3 using the HTTP service. Now you have to configure your security policies on the firewalls to allow that traffic through. Well, you look at your network diagram, you figure that 10.1.1.1 is over here in the green network, 3.3.3.3 is over there in the blue network, so you need to touch firewall 1, you need to put, touch firewall 3, and basically you need to write the rule as requested by the application owner to allow the requested traffic. And that's all fine if there is no address translation going on. But if there is NAT going on in your environment, then things get a little more complex. So let's imagine that one of the simplest scenarios is that firewall 1 is in configured to do source NATing. It's hiding the whole subnet of 10.1.1.1.0 behind one particular IP address, let's say 10.1.1.11. So any traffic that comes from the, sub, the green subnet, as it exits firewall 1, the source IP address is going to be translated to 10.1.1.11. If that's the case, then you cannot write the rule on the downstream firewall, in this case firewall 3, as requested because when the traffic reaches firewall 3, it's going to have the translated IP address in the source. So you have to write the translated address in the source of the rule in firewall 3, like this. 10.1.1.11 to 3333, allowing HTTP. And then the traffic will go through firewall 1, will be allowed by the security policy in the green firewall, will be translated the source to the intermediate address of 10.1.1.11, and firewall 3, seeing the translated traffic, would allow that through as well in its access policy. Okay, so far so good. What happens though if instead of this simple source NATing, you have a destination NAT going on? So maybe uh, instead of this type of address translation, you have a rule on the firewall 1 that says if the destination belongs to 3333-24, then do a static NAT and translate that to 2220-24. So this firewall is actually translating the whole subnet of 3330 mapping it one-to-one -to, -one to the subnet 222 slash 24. If that's the case, two things happen. First of all, the path that you considered in the, in the first example, going through firewall 1 and then for, through firewall 3, that path is no longer correct because the traffic goes through firewall 1, the destination changes to 222.3, two, two, and then the flow of the traffic is really this way and it's going to hit tra the, the server in the red network over there. So understanding the NAT policy on firewall 1 really determines the path that the traffic will take through the network and it really determines which firewalls you need to modify. You no longer have to modify firewall 3, you have to modify firewall 2. In addition to that, the security policy uh, that you have to put in um, the red firewall in firewall 2 is going to show the source being 10.1.1.1 and the destination being this red server over here, 2.2.2.2. Whereas the security policy on firewall 1 is still going to show the destination as requested by the business owner. Now the business owner doesn't necessarily know that all of this is happening, so they might even complicate matters further and make their original request using the, the address 2222 to begin with. They might not know that there is natting going on and they might request the traffic as 
according to the IP address, the public IP address of the red server. If this happens, the networking team really has to do a reverse translation to take the destination as provided in the request and realize that this is a postnet address, somehow identify what the pre-net address for it should have been, so recognizing the 3333, to allow them to write the policy on the first firewall to use the pre-net address and then on the security policy on the second firewall to use the post-net address. So to summarize, what you really need to take away from this lesson is that you need to understand the NAT policy in your organization, first of all, to, ident to learn and identify the paths through the network and which firewalls you need to modify to allow a particular change request. And also, you need to understand the NAT policy in your organization to be able to actually write the security policy rules on the relevant firewalls correctly. And if you're going to use an automated system to help you manage this complexity, you need to make sure that your solution understands the NATing as well so that it gives you accurate recommendations. Thank you for your attention.